Hello everyone. Let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about immunology. Inside of the animal body there is an environment that is perfect for microbial organisms to flourish. The animal body is warm, it's quite wet, and it is rich in nutrients. This is, again, a perfect place for microbes to grow and thrive. The survival of animals, therefore, depends upon dealing with this potential invasion of microbes, dealing with the problem of pathogenic microbes coming in and creating disease. The animal immune system is what provides that defense. As we're going to talk about today, the immune system uses multiple mechanisms to defend the body from invasion and infection by microbes. Those mechanisms are spread across multiple locations within the body and different mechanisms are combined and directed against different types of microbes. In other words, the body is going to combine certain mechanisms in order to fight bacterial pathogens. It will also combine other mechanisms to fight viral pathogens. Animals are not able to survive without an immune system. Humans are included in that. So when we speak about the immune system in humans, we're talking about a system that is composed of cells and products that are produced by and secreted by cells and tissues, which if you recall from your anatomy and physiology class, tissues are simply combinations of cells that work together. The immune system will protect against infection by pathogenic microbes. It will also protect us against foreign materials that sometimes get into the body. And by that I mean things that are not alive but are foreign to our bodies. We're not going to focus on that part of the immune system today. Instead, we're going to focus on how the immune system protects us against foreign pathogenic microbes. Remember, the immune system is very complex. It includes multiple interacting systems. In fact, there is no one system that can do the job all by itself within this overarching immune system. The invasion of the human body by microbial pathogens triggers the entire immune system. Another important thing to consider as we begin this introduction to the immune system is that the human immune system has to be able to differentiate what kind of foreign materials it is encountering. Remember, your body is full of microbes. You are covered in microbes and you contain millions and millions and millions of microbes within your body. Those microbes are helpful to you. They are part of your microbiome. They are not a threat. And your immune system has to be able to see those helpful microbes as being different from pathogenic microbes. And that is not an easy thing to do, not an easy thing to achieve. Our microbiome has to be tolerated, in other words, or even ignored by our immune system. 
And what that means is that all of those organisms, for example, that live in your gastrointestinal system, all of those organisms are going to be seen by your immune system. Your immune system will see them, will recognize them, will even therefore generate a small response to them in that recognition. But your immune system will not generate what we would call a strong defensive immune reaction. That is tolerance. That is how the immune system works to tolerate the organisms that are foreign to you, but that have a normal part of your body. We're going to be discussing the immune system in three parts. We're going to talk about first the physical barriers that are in your body that protect you against invasion by pathogens. We're going to talk about what's referred to as innate immunity, the innate immune system. Those are the parts of the immune system that are non specific. They are the first line defenders against invasion, but they use very general mechanisms to simply encounter and fight against anything that's foreign. The innate immune system has cellular components that we're going to talk about. It also has what are called humoral components. And when you hear that word humoral in connection with the immune system, it refers to the things that are not cells, the things that cells secrete, for example, the chemicals, the soluble molecules that are involved in immunity. Last, we'll talk about what's referred to as adaptive immunity. This is the parts of the immune system that produce a very specific response. These are the second line defense mechanisms. And again, they include both cellular components and humoral components. Importantly, it's the adaptive immune system that's responsible for producing antibodies. But remember, as we talk about these three systems within the immune system, there is no immune response that is limited to one of these things. There is no immune response that only involves physical barriers or only involves innate immunity or only involves adaptive immunity. These systems are very intertwined with each other. So let's start with the physical barriers that are the very first thing that protects you from invasion by pathogens. The physical barriers include, of course, your skin. Your skin, when it's intact, is an amazing physical barrier against pathogen invasion. Physical barriers also include the internal sorts of linings that sit between you and the outside world. And last, you have a living barrier on and in your body that is your microbiome. Let's consider each one of these. Your skin is an amazing organ. When it is intact, it provides a physical barrier between your body and the environment. But your skin is also a chemical barrier in that the cells that compose your skin secrete chemicals that help protect you against invasion. And finally, your skin is a living barrier in that your skin is covered in microbes. And those microbes help to prevent pathogenic microbes from finding a way in. In terms of the internal 
linings in your body. I'm talking about epithelial linings here. Remember, your respiratory tract is lined with epithelium. Your gastrointestinal tract, from the mouth all the way to the anus, is lined with epithelium. Your urogenital tract is lined with epithelium. Epithelium is an amazing tissue. It is what we like to call self-cleaning in that it too secretes chemicals, um, things like mucus, the tears that cover your eyes, saliva, and so on. Those chemicals help to constantly remove any potential pathogens that might land on and encounter that epithelium. There are also processes that go on that we think of as being parts of sickness that are actually helping to clear away pathogens. For example, coughing, sneezing. These are things that help expel potential pathogens out of your respiratory tract. Vomiting, diarrhea, these are things that help expel pathogens out of your gastrointestinal tract. Even the flow of urine is helpful in pushing pathogens out of your urinary tract. So it's critical that we remember that anywhere that you, your body encounters the environment, there are protections there against pathogens invading. That means not just on the outside surface of you, on the skin, but also on the inner surfaces that are, again, exposed to the environment. Remember the tube, for example, that runs from your mouth down into your esophagus and your stomach and your intestines and out through your anus. That is a tube that gets exposed to the environment because you put food into your mouth that comes from the environment and it travels all the way down that tube. Your respiratory tract is exposed to the outside environment. Your urogenital tract is exposed to the outside environment. And these internal epithelial linings are protecting you from pathogens that you might encounter in those locations. And of course, your microbiome is a critical part of the barrier between you and pathogen invasion. Your microbiome, remember, covers you on the outside and it covers these internal epithelial linings. The microbiome is not only a source of helpful microbes for you, but it is also a source of just enormous numbers of helpful microbes that create a barrier when pathogens try to get to the epithelial linings of your intestine, for example, they're met by a layer, a, a thick layer of living microbes. And those helpful, healthy microbes vastly outnumber the planktonic, pathogenic microbes that are trying to invade. Another thing to remember is that your microbiome has adapted to you. Remember we said all cells evolve in a way that allows their enzyme systems to function best within the environment that they live. So your microbiome is adapted to you and the conditions in your body. Pathogenic microbes don't have that advantage. They are not adapted to you necessarily. On this slide, I have a couple of images that depict that critical barrier that is your skin. On the left hand side, this is a, a diagram of a cross section through human skin. 
don't worry about all these individual structure labels. That's not what's important here. I just want you to recall from anatomy and physiology when you learned about the fact that your skin is com composed of an epidermis, a dermis, and a hypodermis or a subcutaneous layer. And remember that within these layers, there are immune cells. Your immune system is not limited to your bloodstream. The cells of the immune system are deposited and moving through the tissues of your body as well. So over here on the right, you can see some of these immune cells that patrol that organ that is your skin. Up in the epidermis, for example, you have T cells, you have Langerhans cells. Um, and into the dermis, you have additional T cells, mast cells, neutrophils, macrophages, you name it, it is present in your tissue or circulating through your tissue in your skin. On this slide, we're reminded about those important epithelial barriers that line the internal compartments of our body that are exposed to the environment. They're showing us that there is that important tube that runs again from the mouth down either the trachea into the respiratory tract or the esophagus into the gastrointestinal tract. And of course, from the stomach, the gastrointestinal tract winds through the small intestine and the colon and out. Remember too, not depicted in this slide, you have a urogenital tract which is also exposed to the environment and lined in those critical epithelial cells.